CarBuzz.com, and this week I am driving something rather interesting. This is the 2022 Polaris Slingshot, and due to a bunch of technical reasons that I'll explain later, this is not a car. This is technically a motorcycle. That's because it has two wheels at the front, but at the back, you only get one wheel. In this video, I'm gonna explain why the Slingshot only has one wheel at the back, because there's a pretty good reason. We're gonna drive it, we're gonna talk about how practical it is, whether or not you should buy one, what it's like to live with, and for all of that, I'm going to have to put on one of these. Let's start by answering a very easy question that's probably on your mind. What the heck is a slingshot? I know you've probably seen people driving in these and wondered what the heck it is. So I'm gonna answer that question for you. So Polaris is a company that you might be familiar with if you've done any sort of off-roading. They make snowmobiles, four by fours, ATVs, side by sides, things like that, not road legal. This is road legal and it kind of looks like a car from the front. You've got headlights, you've got kind of a front end, but there's a very important reason why it's not. We've got two wheels here at the front and you do drive it with a steering wheel, so it is not a motorcycle. It is technically more like a car in that respect, and you do get some car-like creature comforts. You get normal seats, you get a stereo, stuff like that. I know motorcycles technically have that too, but here at the back, we only have one wheel that's driven, and the important reason for that, why they didn't just put two and make it like something like a KTM Crossbow, which is like a track car, is because according to the US government, if it has fewer than three wheels, it is not a car, it is a motorcycle or an auto cycle and that means that Polaris didn't have to do all sorts of crash testing that means you don't have to have an airbag in that steering wheel or anywhere else in the vehicle you don't have to pass a bunch of safety tests and that makes the slingshot much cheaper to develop now I'm sure you want to know how the slingshot drives so let's find out there is truly nothing like this on the road except for maybe the Vanderhall which again has three wheels but aside from this little windshield, which does a good job of protecting you from really getting blasted in the face, this is a completely open experience. I can see the wheels turning in front of me. I can literally reach out of the car and grab the road itself. It's crazy. Even a Mazda Miata feels like an isolating experience next to the slingshot. Now let's talk about what's under the hood. Polaris used to borrow a General Motors Ecotec engine with a turbocharger, but they've now decided to use their own ProStar engine. It's a two liter, four cylinder, develops 178 horsepower in the base configuration. But since we have the SLR trim, we've got a more meaty 203 horsepower. That doesn't sound like a lot in 2020 terms, but remember this car only weighs about 1,600 pounds. So it's over a thousand pounds lighter than a Honda Civic Si, and it has actually a little bit more power than that Civic. So it is very quick. So zero to 60 in this car, Polaris says takes just 4.9 seconds. Now the problem is we only have one wheel at the back. So putting that power down isn't exactly easy. I'm gonna turn the traction control off and let's just see if we can get it off the line here. There's wheels <laughs> Wheel spin. <laughs> I just really lit up that wheel and I wasn't really trying. When you have two contact patches back there, it makes it a lot easier to get off the line. That engine is pretty much always a presence. It's very loud, especially when you get it up to high RPMs. And I'm really loving this new ProStar engine. It revs really quick and really high, up to 8,500. Let me just do that now. smell it because there's not really a lot of insulation between you and the engine so you don't just hear it you also smell gasoline coming into your nose as you do that it is a crazy experience and as i mentioned all of the power from that pro star engine is going to go out to the rear wheel it's literally rear wheel drive uh, through either a five-speed manual transmission, which is what we have that comes standard on all slingshots, or you can get their new five-speed automatic transmission, which they just added paddle shifters to. Now, I don't think that the automatic would really do much to ruin the driving experience here. You're still gonna get a lot of the craziness here with the slingshot. It's gonna have no roof, it's gonna have the same steering, it's gonna have the same crazy engine, but it's gonna be a little bit easier to drive without the manual. But I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice because this manual box is really good. I love 
throwing through the gears in it. It feels very mechanical, very notchy. Like I'm literally in there changing the gears myself. Like it's a direct linkage. I've driven a lot of modern manuals that can feel a little sloppy, a little bit disconnected. This is one of the best manual transmissions I can remember driving in a long, long time. So I don't think I would spend the extra on the automatic. I would stick with the manual. If you can put on a helmet and subject yourself to all of the elements and get rained on and have the wind hit you and the sun and all of that, but you draw the line at learning how to drive a stick shift, that's just a little bit odd to me. So I've really grown to love the slingshot experience. There's kind of just nothing else like this on the road short of getting a motorcycle, but I will say <laughs> that it is not a perfect experience. As I mentioned, it's a little bit tough to put down the power with just one wheel, and because we only have three wheels instead of four, it lacks the stability that you get from a sports car like a Mazda Miata or a Subaru BRZ. So I'm gonna take a corner now, and it doesn't roll around too much, but I just do not have the confidence in it that I would if I had four wheels with two of them being driven back there. And this is not going to be an autocross star or a track star. Honestly, I looked this up in the regulations. You actually cannot race this in SCCA autocross because you need to have two driven wheels at the back. You cannot drive the slingshot, and I don't really think you'd want to. This is more of a gentle cruiser. It is not really a sports car, although it is pretty stiff when you go over a speed bump, especially when it goes over that back wheel, it kind of bumps you out of the car. And then that being said, I don't think the steering is what I would want it to be for track work. They've kind of made it like the same steering ratio you get on a normal car. I was thinking it would be like quicker lock to lock. So I'm about to go on a U-turn now. I'm gonna show you how long this takes. So I'm turning the wheel like quite a lot actually uh, to make that turn. And I'm pretty sure I know why they did that because this thing can go pretty fast. I think it can go like a little over 100 miles an hour. And at that speed, you wouldn't want it to be too twitchy. It already has like a decent amount of feel on center. It does feel like you are doing a lot at the wheel, but I think they had to program in just a little bit of slop in there or else it would have been too twitchy and too aggressive. And that's just not what Polaris was going for here. The other issue that I have here are these side bolsters. I mentioned that it doesn't roll around that much, but if I really push it, <laughs> it feels like I'm gonna fall out of this seat. And then when I go the other way, it feels like oh, I'm gonna fall out of the car. These side bolsters are very large, but they are so floppy that it feels like I'm gonna fall out of the car every time I take a corner too hard. So if you're looking for something that's like the fastest Canyon Carver in the world, it is not the slingshot. I think you'd be better off with a motorcycle or a sports car. So in summation, I think it's best to just cruise around in the slingshot, drive it around a little bit. Don't push it too hard, because honestly, I don't really think the brakes will hold up to too much abuse anyway, because of course there's only three of them instead of four in a normal car. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit them now. Ugh. You have to squeeze them very firmly. And I've noticed that in traffic, I've had to really like panic brake a couple times. This does not have the upgraded Brembo brakes that are only available on the top slingshot model. Maybe those help a little bit, but these brakes just really don't feel solid to me. I think that the upgraded engine is fantastic. I think it was a good move for Polaris to use their own engine. Um, I'd like to try those bigger Brembo brakes to see if they make a bigger difference. And I do have one interesting thought. What if the slingshot was electric because you're not going that far in it. I mean, seriously, it has no roof and no storage, so you're not taking a road trip in it. But if it was electric, would more people want it? Because it's not as loud, it's not as like tedious to drive. You can kind of silently go about and not make so much noise and disrupt people. I'd really like to see if an electric model would be possible in the near future. I think that would be a really cool idea. And hey, everybody, I just wanted to add this section. Um, I'm talking about practicality. The sky has now opened up in Florida. It is very much raining out right now. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the slingshot is like to drive. As I showed you, you know, the seats are getting very wet, but they are waterproof. So you don't really have to worry about it or the screen or anything else uh, too much. Um, I am getting wet, obviously, as is my helmet. If I were driving the slingshot around, I'd want to bring like a rag or something with me uh, just to wipe my visor. But 
not too bad. I don't know. I thought it would be worse. Um, this happened on our first day of filming, so I actually had to film the driving segment later on. But yeah, just wanted to let you know that that happened. I survived. Water is wet. I am waterproof. That's it. Now we're gonna pull over and check out the interior, but before we do that, be sure to leave us a like. It would really go a long way towards helping us make more videos like this. Subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And if you wanna read more about the 2022 Polaris Slingshot, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. Now here inside the Polaris, we have some amenities, obviously a roof not being one of them, but it is a little bit nicer than you'd expect. We've got the SLR model, which has some upgrades that you won't find on a base slingshot, including this seven inch touchscreen. It actually works really well. I have no problems with how it functions. You've got these rubberized buttons down here that are very easy to push. It has Bluetooth. It even has Apple CarPlay, but I can't use that because you need a Bluetooth headset in your helmet and I just don't happen to have one of those. Now this screen is tied to a Rockford Fosgate audio system that I thought sounded kind of crappy at first, so I just used my Apple AirPods instead. But once I played around with some of the settings, I thought that the music came in much clearer and it really does overpower the wind and the engine in this car. You can hear the music even when you're driving at cruising speeds, which is pretty cool. The other thing that I really like here that I found in the settings is that you can have it automatically lower the volume when you come to like a stop and then it'll get louder as you drive off off. That way you're not that guy in the intersection that's blasting his music and annoying everybody else around you. I like that a lot. Now the gauges look quite like a motorcycle, which is really cool. You've got your tack on one side, speedometer on the other side, and then you have this little screen. It's kind of basic in the middle, but you can change the information on it. You have your time, you have your miles per hour and your RPM, but you can use these mode and arrow buttons to change what's on the top and what's on the bottom to have whatever you'd like displayed up there. Obviously this interior is very simplistic. Everything is waterproof or water resistant, as Polaris says, because of course there's no roof. So if it starts to drizzle, which it is now, everything will be safe. You don't have to worry about it, including the screen, the rubberized buttons, even the seats are made of a water resistant material. Obviously there's no air conditioning, but if you opt for the model above the SLR, you can get heated and ventilated seats, which is a nice touch if you're driving it on a hot or a cold day. Now, one of the downsides of having everything be waterproof is that it does feel pretty cheap. I'm talking Chevy Aveo rental car levels of cheap. This plastic is really not automotive grade. I already mentioned how the seat bolsters, while nice looking, really don't hold you in. Uh, but again, that's just a microcosm of having it be waterproof. And if you do want a slightly less open experience, you can get something that Polaris calls the excursion top. It's basically a roof canopy that goes over this car. I haven't driven it with that, um, but I think that if you want the open top slingshot experience, you should just get it how this one is and I wouldn't bother with the excursion top. Those were the amenities, but at this point you might be wondering, can I bring anything in the slingshot? Is it practical? Well, obviously there's no trunk in the front or back. Where would you put them? So all of your storage is here on the inside. You do get two cup holders, so each passenger gets to have a drink. Behind that, you have this little padded armrest. I guess you could put your phone or your wallet in there, and that is closed and maybe water resistant as well. You could probably just stick your phone right here. It is nicely recessed, so I wouldn't be worried about your phone falling out there. We do have this very nice deep glove box. That actually is quite enormous compared to a normal car. It is lockable as well, although Polaris did not give me the key, so I can't personally lock it in this video to show you. We get a little bit more storage up here on the dash, although I wouldn't put too much there. But then the biggest storage area is gonna be hidden behind these seats. You just fold the seat forward. There's one on the driver's side as well. And you get this big box, also lockable, where you can see I have a backpack. You can also fit your helmet in there. So if you don't wanna bring your helmet in wherever you're going, maybe you're going out to dinner, you can leave the helmet in the car. I know it's pretty limited, but I think they've done decently well with the storage for what they have here. All right, so I've showed you how practical, or in this case, impractical, the slingshot is. You don't have that much storage. I guess you could do a small grocery run, but what we're gonna do is test it out by going through a fast food drive-through, because of course we do have two cup holders here. Uh, so let's try it out. I already feel ridiculous sitting in the line here. This is so funny. <laughs> People look at you in this car a lot. I will say, that nothing under $30,000 gets as much attention as a slingshot. Nothing. Not a Miata, not a motorcycle, nothing. Hello. Are you able to hear me over the engine? I can shut it off. Okay. Um, can we do a number one 
Fantastic. Easy. Cool, thank you. Gee, she could even hear me. I didn't even have to shut the engine off. Although I think I'm getting dirty looks from some of the other people who don't necessarily appreciate the loudness of the slingshot's engine. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it's a little bit of a reach. We are quite low in the slingshot. There's our reach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And luckily we still have a place in the cup holder. Now we did get a little bit baked in the sun while doing that, but I think this just proves that there's nothing that you can do in a regular car that you can't do in a slingshot. Maybe, maybe you couldn't take it through a car wash, maybe that, but other than that, it's like a car. So that was the 2022 Polaris Slingshot. Not quite a motorcycle, not quite a car either. It's so unique. There's really not much else like this on the road. And if you want one of these, cause you've deemed it's very exciting and I want to be seen in it, there are a couple ways you can buy one. The base S model is going to cost you just under 20 grand, $1,750. If you want the automatic transmission, as I mentioned, that's available on all models. Personally, I think that manual transmission is the best part about the car and I would totally get that. If you want this SLR model, which has the more powerful engine, fatter tires, some other nice things inside, that's gonna cost you about $29,000. Now, obviously there are a lot of vehicles that you could get for less than 28 grand. You could get a motorcycle or on the car side, the Mazda Miata springs to mind. You could get the Subaru BRZ or the Toyota GR86. Now those cars are actually a little bit dynamically better than the Slingshot and obviously they have roofs and trunks and in the case of the Subaru and the Toyota, even a bad seat but you won't get the stairs that you will receive in the Polaris slingshot and perhaps to you the stairs are worth the cost. <laughs> 